Okay, welcome to our second instalment for our coaching webpage. Today we're lucky enough to have Simon Helmut from the Victorian Bush Rangers and also the Renegades coach. Uh, Simon, thanks for joining us. Pleasure, Tom. Beautiful. Just as a bit of a, a background to you um, and what you're currently doing and also what you've done to this point in terms of your coaching career, that'd be great. I uh, started my coaching career back in 1997, so I think it's uh, 15 years ago now. I uh, coached seven years in, uh, in club cricket. Uh, and then in 2005, went up to uh, Canberra and coached uh, the Canberra Comets. And then have been back in here in Victoria for the last five years as head coach of the, the One Day side, coach of the Melbourne Renegades and assistant coach to Greg Shepherd in the, in the Sheffield Shield competition. Uh, during the last few years, I've also been the uh, Australian A head coach and, uh, and assisted the Australian side. So I've had some good experiences over the last few years. Excellent. Thanks, Simon. Um, one thing that you hear coaches talk about a lot is a coaching philosophy. Um, just wondering if you'd like to give our coaches your philosophy and maybe whether that philosophy has changed over time during those different roles. Oh, look, it hasn't changed a whole lot. I think to have care and compassion for your players, no matter what the level, is, is first and foremost. I suppose, though, to develop an environment where players can get the best out of themselves uh, is critical. And uh, that can be easily done in a high-performance uh, model, I suppose, where you have more coaches and assistants and, and, a lesser play, and a smaller playing group. Whereas when you're coach, coaching a larger group, that is difficult to have that one-to-one -one correspondence. But uh, show care, compassion, ask more questions than giving advice. Yep. Very nice. What what do you en you obviously enjoy your coaching? You've coached for a long time. What do you enjoy most about coaching? Oh, well, firstly, winning uh, and the challenge of. of putting a team on the park together, working with players to devise plans that are going to help you beat the opposition, so that certainly is a driver. Yeah. Um, I'm obviously very passionate about the game and, uh, and I believe I have abilities and skills in, in leading and coaching, so to, to have your passion along along with uh, something that you're okay at, uh, I think is uh, probably an excellent part of uh, being involved in the game of cricket. Um, le relationships, uh, working with people, growing and developing. I think uh, we're always looking for new ideas and new things to improve and T20 is certainly showing the way with that. Mm. Um, what's, your, what's been your biggest challenge as a coach to date in your career? Oh, I think last season when we uh, when we won the first uh, one day title in a number of years, uh, we'd lost the fir the previous four years. So, winning the one day title was it was a great challenge. It was my first year, I suppose, a, a coach, a head coach in my own right. Yeah. Um, and so that was a successful challenge. Uh, but also last season with the Melbourne Renegades, you weren't so successful in only winning a couple of games and finishing in the lower end of the table, uh, getting a list together uh, and and developing a, a group very very quickly before we had to uh, to go and compete. So that was a... I've had the highs and lows so far and uh, the life of a coach in cricket, you still have to be successful and perform. Um, I have two very clear KPIs, I suppose, in my two jobs. Uh, for Victoria, is to develop players to who can play for Australia for yep. extended periods of time. And the Melbourne Renegades about winning, and that's all. <laughs> that's good. And you've mentioned a couple of your successes. They'd be one of your biggest successes, the Ryobi Cup. Uh, success the other year? Oh look it certainly was and to work with uh, players of uh, Peter Siddle and David Hussey and Cameron White, Brad Hodge, Andrew McDonald, fortunate to be working with uh a, a, you know, so a high calibre of players. Yeah. I suppose the feature of winning that championship, though, is that we had a significant number of those players out uh, when it came to playing in the finals in the latter end of the season. So that certainly challenges you to coach when you may not have the the strength that you usually have with your team. How do you still get the best out of those lower end players? And I suppose coming through as a development coach that helped me in the, in then working with the with high level elite teams. Yeah. Um. One thing that often you hear in, in coaching is a mentor. Would you like to talk about, have you had any mentors through your coaching career that, that you speak to a lot? I have many mentors or confidants or other assistants and coaches who help you develop and I think there's two reasons why you have them. One is to to challenge you and to keep trying to make you better, uh, especially in areas where you're worried or concerned about parts of your coaching journey or life or even situations. So it's great to have people you can go to. 
don't always have to be cricket people. They can be people in business or in, or in other sports. Yep. Um, also, cricket's great in that we have you know specific skill sets and to have um, coaches specifically concentrating on those skill sets, bowling coaches, spin bowling coaches, wicket keeping coaches, you're forever able to, to go and uh, get some more expertise and maybe areas that you aren't, aren't so uh, strong in. So I think here in Victoria and certainly in the Australian system, I've been very fortunate uh, to be involved with many people who are highly skilled in as generalist coaches mm. or in fact uh, specialist coaches and me being a generalist coach um, you know I need to seek the advice of those people to most importantly it's a players game get to get the best out of the players yeah very good what's the best uh, advice you've ever received from a coach or for your coaching Oh, the best advice I've been given is to try and remain as balanced and, and as consistent as, as possible. Um, as, a, uh, as a younger coach, now more experienced, uh, probably my emotional <laughs> roller coaster at times uh, played out too publicly and, uh, and that could at times affect your players. And that's, and that's even when you're having successes uh, to when you're obviously having disappointment. So remaining calm and relaxed and, uh, and that enables you to then make good decisions on game day but also in, in your preparation um, yes you might be fairly anxious up inside at times yeah. but uh, but making sure that you understand as I suggested it's a player's game and you're there to support the player yeah. to, to ensure that they can uh, uh, get the best out of themselves excellent uh, any parting words of wisdom for our, our budding EAP coaches or players um, I suppose uh, on a serious note to Ask more questions uh, to, to players before you intervene. Coaching is about intervention, but you must be so careful when you go about doing that, yep. uh, ensuring that uh, at times when we intervene as coaches actually might have the players go the other way. So just be careful that. Ask more questions. Um, don't turn your back on the nets. Don't run with scissors. Don't play with matches. <laughs> very nice. Simon Helmet, thanks very much for joining us on a dreary day here in, uh, in Melbourne. Really appreciate your time. Thanks. Good coaching.